Okay, we've got round one. This seems decent. We've got a Reclamation Sage, so we can kind of stop some of our opponent's early shenanigans. Shardless Sage and Critted something really good, like Ruffellos. Although, not great in this hand, Ruffellos. Uh, Finehorn Elves ramps us. Yep. Certainly seems like a keeper. Need a little bit more ramp so we can get to Tooth and Nail, but we will do it in hopefully fairly early. Ooh. <laughs> the mirror match against another ramp deck. All right, well, that should be interesting. I wonder if they... So, I guess we could just go Nykthos, Signet. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, and then Reclamation Sage away Mana Vault. Hopefully they don't use it this turn. Uh-oh. I'm hoping this is just, like, Gilded Lotus and not something really nasty. Acidic Slime. Yep, something pretty nasty. There goes our island. Well... That's not too bad. I'll still kill the Mana Vault, I think. Oof. Opposition's annoying now. Yeah, here comes the big guns. Red Mana. They might actually be using that. Magus of the Moon. Okay. Their deck is weird. So are they a ramp deck or are they a mid-range deck? Feels like they might be the mid-range deck. All right, well, that does cut off a little bit of mana from us, but it's not actually that bad. Would have had Tooth and Nail Entwined. It's good for them that they stopped that. Really, that only made one extra mana, though, so we still have eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, yeah, so we still have eight mana. So just one more turn, we get Tooth and Nail. All we need is that Eldrazi spawn. Again, next turn, we're fine. Now the opponent needs to either untap Mana Vault or just take damage. And they're going to untap. Alright. Which is good, because it means that they're just really not doing anything this turn. And I get to Tooth and Nail. Search for tomorrow. Yeah, it's just way more important for us to entwine Tooth and Nail here. So we go... Make some mana. Entwine. Sacrifice, sacrifice, tap this, and that should be pretty bad. I can't imagine that this works out well for our opponent. We can get, like, Primeval Titan and Woodfall Primus to kill the Mana Vault. I kind of like that. Another option is to go Avengers Endicar and make a million tokens. I guess it's only four, but make a big board. I kind of just like, okay, our opponent just doesn't even want to see. That's kind of weird that they just scooped, because generally I'd want to see what my opponent's win conditions are, but, I mean, sure, I'm fine with this. I think that I'd have ultimately gotten Woodfall Primus and Primeval Titan. That way we can get double island for opposition, and we can get uh, Woodfall Primus down to kill the Mana Vault. That's interesting that our opponent just decided not to see it. All right. Oh wow, we have our fellows. Yeah, can never mulligan this. Nice. Oob. They might have a kill spell for our fellows. Certainly reasonable. Sneak attack. Okay. Well, I can Reclamation Sage away sneak attack. So that's actually not that bad for us. Uh, so yeah, we just go Awakening Zone. I'm not sure. Hmm. Sneak Attack with all these ramp cards. Seems like you just want to play them. But yeah, I can't let Sneak Attack live. And this is why Reclamation Sage is very strong. Like we said, we try and stay away from the mid-range kind of cards, but Reclamation Sage or, like, they have Acidic Slime, those are exceptions. You just need answers to cards like Sneak Attack or, like, Recurring Nightmare, Mana Vault, Soul Ring. <laughs> Speaking of... Okay, opponent's deck is now looking a little off the rails. I am not sure what's going on anymore. Always Yes and Always Yield. We have a billion mana. I think that we have enough. Yeah, we have enough for Tooth and Nail with your fellows. We play the Forest, sacrifice that, and we have... Uh, Tooth and Nail going, and our opponent disconnected. Uh, hopefully they come back. We'll see in a minute. Well, uh, looks like our opponent has lost the game for not showing up. I think that we would have won that anyways. I mean, at this point what we do is we get another Force into play, Tapper Fellows, which will double all of our mana, 
because it's going to deal... It, it gets a mana for each force that we have in play. So we go to 8. We get Awakening Zone token, and that's 9. We just play Tooth and Nail and Twine. We get Woodfall Primus and Kilder Curry Nightmare, so our opponent can't do anything crazy with that. Maybe even Mana Vault, and then... Yeah, actually, probably just Mana Vault. We probably just kill Mana Vault. We have Recurring Nightmare, and we get Primeval Titan. And then, like, what does our opponent do from there? We have Deranged Hermit, Primeval Titan, and... Uh, the Woodfall Primus, and it's just a ton of damage. Our opponent has, like, five mana. I don't think that's enough to do anything, so I think that we were fine. But, in any case, I will see you for round two. Kind of... Round two, we have our hand. Seems good enough. It's not amazing, but it's fine. Opponent did Mulligan already. Let's have to see what happens. I need another ramp spell so we can get the prime time earlier. If we can do that, or if we have our opponent play like a Signet or Solar, hopefully not Solar Ring because I just don't want my opponent to have the card, but some kind of ramp like Artifact, that'd be great for Reclamation Sage. Any of those kinds of things happens and this hand becomes pretty good. And I'm probably not going to have a lot of targets for Reclamation Sage here, unfortunately. Although the opponent might not have another land. Ooh, okay. They should, oh, they do. They just, and they're not leveling up Student Warfare. I'm very confused. I have no idea what this could mean. I think I just play the Sheldock Isle for now. I don't need to use Reclamation Sage when I don't have anything here. All right, Avenger Zendikar, pretty easily, and pass the turn. This could be a lot of things. Wouldn't mind if it was like Spear of Helios or something. Heliod, sorry. Oh, Mirren Crusader? Yeah, that's more of a problem. Uh-oh. This is why you want that card draw that we talked about. Look at how bad our draw has been. I mean, granted, I... I I think I would have. It's not necessarily that this would have been helped out that much by card draw, but like we're drawing the wrong side of our deck. We need to have a couple ramp spells for all these late game cards that we're drawing, and it's just not working right now. We're going to take roughly a billion damage here. Yep, ten. We're still not pumping mana into student warfare. I don't understand this. Like it could be double strike by now for sure. Well, we are just dead. Despite the uh, weird choices from our opponent here, there's nothing that we can do about that. We want to sideboard a lot differently, so we're just going to take out basically all the ramp kind of endgame type cards. We don't need Woodfall Primus, we don't need Avenger, don't need Tooth and Nail. Maybe Primetime or Consecrated Sphinx. Consecrated Sphinx is good against the Mirren Crusader at least, so I might want that in. Uh, we'll kind of think about those two, so we take out those three. We might not want some early game out, uh, or things like Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library is a little too dirtily, so Sylvan Library can probably come out. I still like Awakening Zone, so that's four cards. We're going to want to put in Kitchen Finks, uh, maybe Wall of Blossoms and Scavenging News. Like, these are the ki kinds of cards that we want. Garrick Relentless is really good. Uh... Where is it? Master of the Wild Hunt is great. Whisperwood Elemental could be okay. I think I still like the Reclamation Sage. I could take out Mystic Snake. I'm not going to be countering a lot of things from them, so I think that's okay. At least not with the double blue. That seems a little tough. Uh, yes, we will play first. So we have a very different deck now. We sideboarded in all of our early game. Oof, this hand's pretty bad. I do draw an extra card off the Wall of Blossoms. I'm not sure that's enough. Ugh, this is really dicey. I think that I might just keep it. Like, Wall of Blossoms blocks pretty well. Hopefully just draw some other things off of it. I I'm gonna keep here. It's dicey, but... We have a few less lands than most decks, too. I think it's okay. We'll see. It's it's really close. I might have just wanted to mulligan this. We'll see what happens, though. Oh, man. Well, I mean, it's more early game. I don't know that I really care about that. 
All I need to do is draw a prime time though, and we're kind of good. Something like Primeval Titan or Consecrated Sphinx would be even better. We're probably okay then. So we chump the 4-2, take 3. Just need one big spell and we're kind of okay. Yeah, Windrub really didn't do anything this game actually, now that I think about it. It hasn't changed any of our plays yet. Kind of funny. I Winter Orb's a weird card. It's either insanely good or just does nothing. Um, hmm, one, two, three, four, five. Sure. We always want to tap the Finehorn Elves. Oh, right, six. Primal Hunter, the Thalia, right, 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 right. Oh, we get a 3-3, three, three, which is useful. I wonder if I just want to draw or if I want to keep pumping out tokens. I probably just want to keep pumping out tokens. Tap the Elves for the Signet so we have more mana open. And play the Scavenging News. That can gain us a lot of life and get very large. Like that. So yeah, let's just keep putting in beasts. Eventually, too, we do threaten uh, ultimating Garrick. It's only two turns away, and what can they do about, like, you know, what is this? Five, six, seven, eight? Like, eight, six, six worms? Probably just lose. I think we get an island. If I draw opposition, I want to have two blue. Ooh, there's Master of the Wild Hunt. That's pretty good. I think we can wait on it, though. At this point, I almost just want to make a million, three, uh, million six sixes. Eight six sixes is probably worth the Garrick. Hmm. I mean, granted, I can plus Garrick again and then do it next turn and still have Garrick. But what does our opponent do about that? Like nothing, right? I don't think they can have an answer for it. Yeah, we'll just ultimate Garrick and just let them draw less things. We have Mana Leak to hard counter anything they play. And we can just attack all out next turn. Scavenging News is going to be huge. Seems fine. They only have four mana. So, I mean, the only thing we can't counter is a one drop, and I don't think there's any one drop that Mana Leak is gonna lose to here. Like, or that we're gonna lose to here. Like, we can Mana Leak anything else. Yeah, there we go. Bam. Whew. Game two under the belt. Let's go to game three. Not the fastest hand, but we will keep it. We have Lotus Cobra into Selesnya Signet Scavenues. Seems fine. And I'd be much happier with this on the play versus my opponent's very fast deck, but I mean, this is probably the best that we can hope for. I don't think going to six is gonna get us a reasonably better hand on average. That's for sure. I'd love a Wall of Blossoms. Wall of Blossoms did insane work last game. Well, hmm, Thalia's coming to rain on our parade. Makes it a little bit tougher to get out Signet into Scavenging News. So go Lotus Cobra. Actually, can we still do it? Play the land, have three, four. Play Signet for three. Tap the last for four, play Scavenging News. Yeah, okay, so we can still do it. We're okay. Oof. Brimaz, King of Orasakos. Orascos. Well, that's a nasty one. I've got the Deranged Hermit, still can't pay the upkeep on it. Makes more sense to get Signet Scavenging News, I think. Just like we were going to plan on doing before. Island. Play the Signet off of that. And then play Ooze, and we have one mana open. 
So we can make Uza 3-3, which means that Blade Splicer and Thalia can't get in. Uh, Brimaz can, which will bring us down to 9, because we gain a life. If they have an Oblivion Ring or something, we're just basically dead. It's very possible they do. Oof, Honor the Pure. Yeah, that's bad. That's really bad. This Thalia is a real pain. I could get Wall of Blossoms off of it and still have mana for scavenger news. That might actually be really good. I could get something for one mana and still have two mana for scavenger news, but that's not good. I want to have two mana for scavenger news because of the Brimaz. But what am I getting for one? Like, just an elf? I need to get, like, a wall. Wall of Roots would work. Actually, Wall of Roots is perfect. Now that I think about it. So X is zero. So go to two, get Wall of Roots. Wall of Roots will block. And it can still let the scavengers eat two things. Which makes it hard for our opponent to get in. The opponent just needs a removal spell for cat scavengers now. Probably an O-Ring here. Oh, they can have Oblivion Ring because of Thalia. Declaration Stone. Ugh. That is actually worse. At least with the uh, Oblivion Ring. Granted, I mean, our opponent couldn't have played it, but with Oblivion Ring, we would have been able to, like, freely's it away. Alright. May as well gain as much life as possible. As is, I think we're pretty dead here. We'll die into the fun, please. Okay, we get to kill Brimaz. We trade off everything. But it's, I think that's worthwhile. I don't know how we get an answer to this Mirren Crusader. Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know that we have an answer in the deck. Well, there's an island to mock us. Because that gets us really close. I mean, if we had another one, opposition just gets us there. But Yeah. I mean, uh, opposition's actually, like, now that we traded off all those tokens, opposition doesn't do enough either. So, I mean, we can go for Green Sun and just see. Just out of curiosity. Ugh, it's super annoying that you have to use the Wall of Roots before you start paying mana costs, but whatever. We can get anything. We can, we could have possibly, like, if only Green Sun Zenith could get blue creatures, we could have gotten Consecrated Sphinx and that would save us. Could get Kitchen Sphinx, but that's not enough. Yeah, we're just dead. Shardless Agent doesn't get us anything. Yeah, nothing we can do. Just a turn short. This is that one turn where if we'd have dodged that Declaration in Stone... Then we had more than enough blue this turn after I play prime time, and then we're just gold. And I don't see how our opponent wins at that point. This is one of those games, like in matches, where it's just that it really depends on like who goes first. It's basically down to a coin flip, because both of our decks are pretty good, and their deck just needs to be fast enough. If they have an average draw and I have an average draw, they're just going to win. If uh, Okay, they're just showing a ring for no discernible reason. I'm, I'm dead on board with Mirren Crusader, but, like, if they have an average draw and I have an average draw, then I, I think that it just comes down to who actually is on the play here, realistically, because I, I can beat them on the play, uh, that one turn made a huge difference, but I can't beat them on the draw, really. We saw that happen. Alright, well, let's go to the next one. Oof, bribery? Hmm... I feel like bribery we can just take. We've got the option to be blue, and bribery is insane. Being able to steal a creature card from your opponent's deck is really disgusting, especially when there's so many, like, 
reanimator and tinker and natural order and all those kinds of strategies that you can use to just cheat huge things out. People play really nasty creatures. 